Hey everybody, kind of a late night tonight. Got off to a little bit of a late start too, so appreciate you for hanging on if you're catching this live and or if you catch it later, more power to you. Um, session 14 is now in the bag. Again, this is the after game review of Curse of the Crimson Throne where we talk about what happened and what went right and what went wrong and uh, let's get into it. Um, once again, didn't have a lot to prep. Most of this was social encounters. There was a short, short, short dungeon crawl that they wound up moving into toward the end. I did not do any conversion, um, and l let me just make a note that I should have converted Greg's. Should have converted the where at boss, but didn't. I mean, normally I would have, um, just to make it a little bit more of an epic fight, but the party started off wanting to parlay, and they didn't wind up parlaying. So, as it happens, that meant that they were dragging in all of the wear rats from the entire thing, which made it a much more difficult fight, which was exactly where I wanted it to land. It's good. Um, and in that fight, we have two players cursed. With where herp, as we call it. Um, so, yeah, they, they've stricken with lycanthropy, and um, they're going to have to deal with that. Or, you know, serve the consequences of being aware at. I forgot how that goes. I think uh, Victor's player said, hey, I'm immune to the disease now. So that's cool. I have to kind of decide whether that's a true statement or not. But um, it, it should be. Blood veil specifically seeks out Varesian humans. So, yeah, they're probably fine. Um, so I had planned to do the uh, encounter of the healer's hands. Basically, they go to church. And they see all the opulence. They see the uh, um, money nature. So Abadar is a um, lawful neutral god. Uh, got a banking and merchants, and uh, he doesn't. His clergy don't heal anyone for free, and that this was mentioned earlier with the sick girl, um, and they saw that in action. Uh, they also got paid very well, which you know um, player characters will typically do things if they get paid very well. So um, that that went uh, just about exactly as I had anticipated it would go. So. Uh, that was mostly just a scene, and they played through that, and then we played through another scene where we're introducing the Plague Doctors, who are going to become more important very quickly, but, you know, a lot of, lot of laying groundwork, laying groundwork, laying groundwork, um, and that was the healer's hand in the first do no harm. Um, I absolutely intended for those scenes to play. I had hoped that they would go back to the ship, and like I said, I offered that to them. They declined. They decided that no, they, they don't want to uh, actually go and dive the wreck. There's some information down there that they could otherwise get, but it's it's kind of a good thing that they're not wasting any time on it because it is a red herring. So, yeah, you know, not going to put too much pressure on them to waste time because it's against their best interests and they feel like they've explored it already. And they do have some information. So, and then uh, so that was mission one. I went ahead and skipped ahead to mission two, which is the plague rats. And this is another sort of morality issue, a little bit of a morality play. So the were rats themselves are not the source of the disease. At least there's, there's no credible belief that they are and could be allies in the cleanup because they're immune to the uh, disease or they believe they are anyway. I mean, in fact they are, but you know, different, different thing, believing something and that thing being true. Anyway, um, so the, like I said, they started to parlay, and that went poorly. The were-rats are an evil bunch of bastards, and they definitely don't like people, and they definitely don't like living in the sewer, and they would really rather be in charge. So it's somewhat incompatible with the way the story goes, and I think some of that is, is scripted into the book, so they're trying to get people... Um, in a state of conflict, and I think that landed very well. And this again goes back to one of the reasons why I would recommend Paizo Adventures, at least of this era. I don't know about the modern ones, but of this era, they are laden with these sort of interesting role-playing decisions. Um, and you know, 
it's not hard to to create some or embellish some where it's not as obviously laden. So whichever way that that might seem to uh, lean, it's just very easy to wind up in a very, very interesting role-playing situation. And we had a party that was somewhat divided, and they did opt to fight them. Oh, excuse me. Which is not unexpected. So, you know, we're, we're moving right along. Um, pretty much a by-the-numbers session, not a ton of prep involved. I did not do any conversions, as I mentioned previously. I just grabbed the stat blocks out of the Monster Manual and threw them on there. I very quickly went over to D&D Beyond to see if I had a wear rat boss stat block, and I did find a wear rat boss stat block in uh, Dragon Heist, but before I loaded it, I went and compared the stats, and he's exactly the same as all of the other wear rats. He just has a name for some reason irritating not useful so no there wasn't one i didn't have one put a normal wear rat in there it worked fine there were so many wear rats and other targets in that room that um yeah it was a difficult fight and their positioning was kind of constrained and stuff now if you're watching the rolls closely on the stream you'll notice there was some not quite correct play going on and i decided it was fine this encounter is not specifically uh, important to the adventure. The peril that they're in should feel real enough to be fun. And uh, I cursed two of them already. So the ongoing damage, the ongoing impact of having had that encounter is there. So I got what I wanted. I didn't really care if they took a little bit of mechanical advantage to speed up the encounter, if that makes sense. So there's one little kernel of a dungeon mastering tip in here is that just from a story and conducting the story perspective there's no great reason to force them to run that encounter completely by the book some some large things some obvious things we want to be careful with but um, our rogue took too many bonus actions you may have noticed i noticed it during the play i'm like it's fine and i explicitly said it's fine um just thinking, believing in my head that somebody could be watching this online and call me on it. And then say, well, yeah, I, I did notice. And, and I said it was fine. I make mistakes too. Don't get me wrong. But in that case, like, I didn't want to, didn't want to pull down the game to um, course correct on that. Wasn't important enough. Now I did get some feedback from my players. I've been giving out more inspiration. I was somewhat inspired by the uh, one D and D play tests where you know you would get it every time you crit and other things and have it more frequently excuse me <sighs> tired happy labor day everybody um so they have been getting it more frequently and i have not been stopping to tell them unanimously my players want me to tell them want me to tell the group i'm giving inspiration i'm giving inspiration so I will do that in the future. Um, again, it's one of those things I feel like sort of interrupts the flow of play. And I don't hate that they're guessing why they got inspiration because it's somewhat useful to me to, you know, just keep doing what you're doing kind of vibe as instead of doing this exact thing or that exact thing is what gave it to you. You know what I mean? Um, but feedback received and heard, I will tell them when I give them inspiration from this point forward. Um, yeah, that's tonight. Questions, comments, concerns, as always, click the thing, join the Discord, message Rethink Gaming on Facebook, whatever you want to do. And I'm happy to have conversations as we move forward. Thank you for watching, everyone who's followed along so far, and there's a small but loyal group of you that are watching these. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. It makes me feel good to believe that people are at least watching or hate watching or you know somewhat interested in this series makes me glad i did it um and yeah with that i'm gonna wrap uh, we have all intentions to play next week i should see everybody in a week till then have fun